actually been one of the better years in terms of uh, like signings who have made a real impact. So it was so hard just to come up with ten, let alone put them in any order. Like honestly, you could put number ten and number one, and I wouldn't even complain that much. That's how good these guys have been, and there've also been a lot of players who.
mustn't forget that he came into an inner side who had just lost their star keeper, Andre Onana, who, despite what he's done at Man United, at the time, previously was one of the, their best players, crucial to their Champions League run, and considered one of the best keepers in the world, actually. That was very big shoes to fill, especially for a 34-year-old who didn't really do too well at Bayern, so many people doubted him. But he stepped up massively, being one of the best keepers in the world this season, with 18 clean sheets to his name in the Serie A, which is the most of any keeper, and those performances have been huge to Inter winning the league. Of course, he's not going to be sold on for lows, but for him to come in after Andre Onana and arguably be even better than Onana is terrific. Number 8. Declan Rice Recent history suggests that spending big on one star is not the most intelligent recruitment strategy. However, this summer several players have bought this trend, which we will get into later. One of those is Rice, who's already had a truly transformational impact at Arsenal. The Gunners fought off competition from Man City to sign the former West Ham player in the summer, and their perseverance has paid off. Not only is Rice regularly dominating games from midfield, he's also chipped in with some vital goals, something that likely wasn't in his remit when he arrived. Yes, he was expensive, but sometimes you've just got to bite the bullet and cough up, like Arsenal did. He's been one of, if not the best Arsenal player this season, with many even putting him in contention for Premier League Player of the Year. That's terrific, and Rice has been great, but there's only a couple things that mean he cannot be higher. Firstly, of course the transfer fee was very high, and while he's justified that, there have been some other players who we will get on to who have had similar impacts on their team for less money. Also, unfortunately, not really due to any fault of Rice, his addition to this Arsenal side looks like it will ultimately mean nothing, as he will probably end the season with zero trophies. So while he's been great, unfortunately he doesn't have anything to show for it, and for that price, I can only put you higher if you deliver your team a trophy. But on an individual basis, what a fantastic debut campaign it was for Declan Rice at Arsenal. Number 7. Marcus Turam. After a season that saw them beat Fiorentina in the Coppa Italia final, lose to Man City in the Champions League final, and finish in the top four for his sixth straight season. Inter Milan underwent a sizable summer rebuild. Andre Onana and Marcelo Brozovic departed for big money fees. Edin Dzeko and Milan Skriniar left on free transfers, whilst Romelu Lukaku left after his loan spell. While Benjamin Pavard has filled in for Skriniar on the right side of defence, his compatriot Marcus Duran has been able to make Inter fans quickly forget about Dzeko and Lukaku with a phenomenal debut campaign at the San Siro. After Henry McDaren and Hakan Janaloglu and Stefan de Vrij, Duran is yet another player who has been excellent at Inter after making the move on a free transfer. After an impressive four-year spell in Germany, Duran left Gladbach to join Inter, and he was immediately ushered into the starting lineup, announcing himself in style with a goal and a brace on his debut. One month later, he broke the deadlock at the hour mark in a 1 0 win against Benfica, becoming the third Frenchman to score for, the, for Inter in the Champions League. Having grabbed a goal contribution in eight of his first ten league matches, Duram set the world alight in Italy and helped delay the building blocks for an epic campaign for Inter, who have become the first team in Serie A history to score in each of their first 31 match days. And Duram has played an indispensable role. Very similar to 
summer he has replaced Lukaku who was a key player for Inter and in terms of the way they played was also very key particularly though his relationship with Lodoro Martinez was important those two played very well as did Dzeko and Lodoro but Durham has come in and been better than Lukaku and Dzeko and made Martinez even better as Martinez has had his best ever season in an Inter shirt to top it all off the reason he ranked so high is because he was a free transfer and didn't cost a single penny. He has been one of the driving factors behind Inter Milan's title win. What an absolute bargain. Number 6. Harry Kane I mean, pretty much copy and paste everything I just said for Rice and swap for Rice price and not for Kane. It's easy to look at all the goals he scored and conclude that Kane was always destined to be a successor Bayern. But prior to his move, the England captain had never ventured outside his comfort zone and seemed destined to be a one-club man. Kane has been so utterly dominant, which speaks to his generational talent that perhaps has not always been appreciated as it should have been. His stats are, to put it bluntly, insane. By the time the mid-season break arrived, Kane had netted 20, game, 20 goals in just 14 games in the Bundesliga, whilst also chipping in with 5 assists. He is, as of recording, on 36 goals in 32 Bundesliga games, as well as 11 Champions League goal involvements. He's had by far the best in terms of numbers debut season of any Bundesliga player in history and he's even pretty close to breaking Lewandowski's Bundesliga goal scoring record which would be mental to do in his first season. He's also performing well in the Champions League scoring in the semi-final first leg versus Real Madrid and I mean as of recording I've been recording this before the Champions League second leg so he could go on to win the Champions League which would cap catapult him straight up the list but for now it looks as if sadly like Rice all of those goals will ultimately mean nothing as game for another season will be going tropeless but on an individual standpoint I mean he can't really do much more number five goal Palmer the fact that Palmer is the only Chelsea player on this list is a depressing indictment of the club's 450 million pound summer transfer splurge. Ironically, his arrival was among the signings greeted with the least enthusiasm when he completed a 42 million switch from Man City. Since then, the 21 year old has emerged as one of Pochettino's leaders. Ashley Scratch that, not one of the leaders, the only leader. He started off on fire, netting six times in the Premier League by December. His performance against Man City in November was a significant moment in his development and he only kicked on from there. The 21-year-old has had a mental 30 Premier League goal involvements for Chelsea this season. And in terms of players aged 21 or under in the Big Five leagues, nobody has more than Palmer. He's in a race for the Bremley Golden Boot with Erling Haaland, which says a lot considering he plays for such a bad team as well, which makes his performances even more impressive. Unfortunately though, the fact that he plays for such a bad team is what prevents him from going up this list, as even though without his goals we would be relegated, his goals looks to ultimately have only taken Chelsea from 10th to 8th. But still, what what an impressive debut season for somebody of his age. And he's also getting a bonus points as Chelsea could probably sell him on for a lot of money if he keeps going like this. And compared to someone like Rice and Kane, he cost half the price. Number 4. Granite Shaka. The next chapter of Granite Xhaka's career began in the summer of 2023. 
captain in Spain with plenty of pressure on his young shoulders, and yet he still managed to surpass all expectations. Since rocking up at the Bernabeu, Bellingham has produced a conveyor belt of iconic moments, netting five times in his first five La Liga games, a period which culminated with him scoring a 95th minute winner against the Tafe, and a few weeks later dragging his teammates to a Clasico victory over Barcelona, notching a brace. Bellingham has also made light work of the Champions League too, grabbing a goal or assist in each of his side's six group stage victories. He perhaps settled into Madrid quicker than any other Madrid player in history, becoming the main man and leader of his Madrid side. And this wasn't just a purple patch either, with Bellingham going on to score 17 goals in the league. And when you consider at the start of the season, when he was bought, nobody really viewed him as a goal-scoring midfielder, more of a box-to-box -box guy, to score 17 goals is insane. And his impact extends beyond the pitch. With Bellingham in town, La Liga is as marketable as it's been since the departures of Ronaldo and Messi, the significance of which cannot be overstated in a world where the Premier League is king. Then there's his iconic celebration, which has been mimicked by a long list of sporting stars. He has been a major reason why Madrid have become La Liga champions, and could still play a pivotal role in them winning the Champions League, which would push him probably to number one. But for now, as I will explain, he is second. Although Bellingham might just go down as one of the signings of the decade if he keeps this up. Alright, so just beating Bellingham to the signing of the season with everything taken into account. Can you guys guess who it is? Number one, signing of the season, 23-24 for me, is Alex Grimaldo. There are a few sites in modern football more gratifying than an attacking wingback in full flight. By Leverkusen fans have been treated to plenty of this since Alonso took over, with Grimaldo and his counterpart Frank Bong, providing heaps of excitement in Germany. The Spaniard registered 7 goals and 5 assists in his side's first 12 Bundesliga games, as Leverkusen shocked to the top of the table. He also contributed significantly to their Europa League campaign, with Alonso's side conceding just 3 times en route to winning all 6 group games. This early season form was very impressive and made a lot of people talk about Grimaldo, with it also earning him his first senior Spain call-up. But it wasn't a purple patch, as Grimaldo has become probably the best left-back in the world, and you can even argue the best overall full-back in the world right now. He is the full-back with almost as many league goals as Vicla Ossiman, and he has more assists than Bruno Fernandes and Morten Odegaard this season. He boasts a phenomenal highlights reel. His tally of 11 goals includes two sensational free kicks, one of which came in September's dual draw with Bayern Munich, and the other also against Bayern Munich, when his side beat them 3-0 in a title-deciding game at that point. His total of 26 goal involvements puts him well clear of any other fullback in Europe's major leagues. Factor in all players and he ranks in the top 15 in a list otherwise dominated by forwards. His numbers going forward are literally better than most elite attackers in the world. His impact at Leverkusen should come as little surprise though. Alonso has helped by using a back three, allowing Grimaldo to play as a wing back but he racked up similar numbers across seven and a half seasons at Benfica, playing primarily as a left-back. Grimaldo helped Benfica win four Portuguese league titles in that time, and there were links with Premier League sides. His former club Barcelona was said to be interested too, but their loss is proving Leverkusen's gain. And what makes this number one signing of the season in the whole of Europe for me is of course 
applause for Jerry on top because all of what I said would make this fantastic and make it a great shout to be number one. But he has done all of this whilst costing zero pounds. Yep, he joined for a free transfer and has become the best fullback in the world this season. Put up huge goals and assist numbers, scored clutch goals and has won the league title with Leverkusen and could potentially go unbeaten with them. That is what you call great business and value for money. His impact at Leverkusen has just been so good. It's been very similar to Bellingham then back to Real Madrid. But he also cost nothing, so that's why I've gone Grimaldo over Bellingham. And congratulations, Alex Grimaldo, you are my signing of the season for 23 24 campaign. So, to round off the top 10, the list is number 10, Artem Dovic, number 9, Jan Sommer, number 8, Declan Rice, number 7, Marcus Duran, number 6, Harry Kane, number 5, Cole Palmer, number 4, Granit Xhaka, number 3, Victor Geigeles, number 2, Jude Bellingham, and number 1, Alex Grimaldo. In terms of those honourable mentions, you could have had a Pal Torres, who was a very good option. He would probably be my number 11. I was very close to putting him in. Savio for Shalona. I mean, I would have put him in, but it's kind of cheating because he's like on loan and technically not. There's a whole like mouldy club thing going on there. Alexis McAllister for Liverpool has been pretty good, but unfortunately not really led to anything. Dennis Under for Stuttgart has been fantastic, but he's only been alone. So, you know, I don't really want to put too many loan players in there. Same thing for Sergio Dest at PSV. Lois Appenda has been great for Leipzig, but again, hasn't really led to anything for Leipzig this season. Victor Boniface probably deserves to be in there, but I didn't want to put loads of Leverkusen players in there, so I just, I, I capped it to do, really. Daily Blind for Shalona has been fantastic value. He was a free transfer, but, you know, it's not like he's been one of the best centre-backs in the world, so I was like, nah. Isco, nice renaissance at uh, Betty's, and again, good value, but not, not led to much. Ross Barkley, again, great renaissance, but Luton will probably go down, so it won't lead to anything. Benjamin Bavard and Acherby didn't want to put too many into players in again. And also Acherby is kind of a loan, so I can't really, you know, he was on loan last year, can't count that. And same thing for Seri Jalazi, who was on loan last season. So that kind of felt like cheating, but yeah. Those were the honourable mentions. That is my top 10. Let me know if you agree or disagree with it. Who did I miss? Who would you put as your number one signing of the season? Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. 